In this video, we are going to take a look at antenna bandwidths. Most antennas have a bandwidth limit. At VHF this usually isn't a problem. But, at HF this may limit full band coverage. Can we overcome this? And, at what cost? The Waters and Stanton video channel is devoted to ham radio topics, including equipment and techniques. It is hosted by Peter Waters, G3OJV. This video is all about antenna bandwidth, HF antennas. Perhaps you can make the bandwidth a bit wider than the manufacturers say it really is. When we start out in ham radio, we're taught that the VSWR on an antenna is a very important feature. Indeed it is. And we come to learn that the target has got to be something like about 1.2. We yearn for perhaps 1.1. We don't really know why, other than we believe it's good. And I suppose we believe that if we go above, say, 1.5, we're going to start to lose signal strength. The radiation from the antenna won't be quite so good. And gracious me, when we get to two to one, we really start to go into a, <laughs> a state of deep depression, at least I think some do. Um, two to one, gosh. Manufacturers use two to one as a marker for the band edges. The bandwidth of an antenna, the commercial one, is usually stated that the two to one VSWR points and uh, anything beyond that is no go. Well, of course it is no go to some extent because all the modern transceivers, um, they really don't like going much above two to one. As soon as they see a VS VSWR above two to one, they start to close down. And so we, of course, do lose signal strength because the transmitter power goes down. If we can get our VSWR down to one to two or one to three, we're delighted. We even boast about it on the air. I've got a 1.2 or 1.3 to one VSWR. Wow, somebody says, that's great. Well, of course, if you've got 150 foot of coax with a loss of two, maybe three dB, you are gonna get a better VSWR because the loss in the coax actually masks the true VSWR. But anyway, most of you have not got gardens that long. You've got gardens where the coax run is going to be around about 50 foot. And the loss on that length of coax is really neg negligible. It will maybe 1 dB or thereabouts. And we've all got losses on coax anyway. So we all start off from a sort of a level playing field, if you like. But that two to one. What happens if we go beyond two to one? And how much do we actually lose as soon as we encroach into the two to one territory? Well, let's take a look. It is a danger sign, but it's only a danger sign because the transceiver doesn't want to feed into a VSWR much higher than two to one. What actually happens when we get to two to one. Well, by that time, we probably press the antenna matcher on the transceiver anyway. And when we're back down to 1.1 or 1.2, we've got a perfect match. Well, we haven't actually. All we've done is presented the transceiver with a transformer match that enables it to deliver full power. And that full power travels up the coax, even though we've still got the two to one VSWR on that coax run to the antenna. So we must lose something, mustn't we? Yes, we do. We do lose something. We lose about half a dB. Half a dB. You couldn't even hear what half a dB was. The difference is so small you wouldn't hear the change. And yet we're up into the 2.1 VSWR area. Wow. So, really and truly, what we're finding out is that the losses we thought we were going to experience don't actually happen at all. Two to one is quite nice. It's quite a nice green field. Feels good. The transceiver is happy because it's seeing a near perfect match. The RF is going up the coax. There's a bit coming down, but 
we're only losing half a DB. So it's wonderful. So why was everybody telling me I've got to be worried? Why, should, why have I got to get my SWR down so low when two to one is quite acceptable? Well, of course, we know that if you get the VSWR low without a matching unit, then you've got the best bandwidth you can have. Then you've got quite a bit of movement before you rise up to the two to one point. So it's, it is important to have that good match at the resonant point of the antenna, get it as low as you can. But two to one, hooray, we're in green fields, it's all working, everybody's quite happy. Stations are coming back to me because there's not that much difference in terms of radiated power between two to one and 1.2 to one. Well, <laughs> now we're on an adventure, aren't we? We've got to two to one, let's go to three to one. Three to one, gracious me. Three to one VSWR. <gasps> We wouldn't go there. We wouldn't go there. The losses must be tremendous. Are they? Are they really tremendous? Well, that's what we've been told. We've been told three to one. You're, you're not getting a, a, a good match and you're going to lose power. Yes, you are going to lose power. You're going to lose one dB of power. Three to one equates to a loss of one dB, one decibel. So what is one decibel. One dB is reckoned to be the smallest change in signal strength that the human ear can perceive. It's tiny. Now, here's how to experience this change is signal strength. Ask your ham radio friend to set up his transmitter to a power level of 50 watts and talk to you on SSB. Then get him to increase the power to 65 watts and repeat the test. That is a one dB signal change. I bet you won't hear any change. Try it. So you'd be lucky if you could hear the difference of 1 dB. Are we going to go any further? Well, let's, let's push the barrier a bit more. Let's go to 4 to 1. Can we go to 4 to 1? Dare we go to 4 to 1? Will the antenna match your work? Well, you press the button and you think, yes, I've got 4 to 1 VSWR. I press the button and the matcher shows 1.2 to 1. Hooray! Now that 4 to 1 VSWR is still on the feeder, but the transceiver has been kitted into thinking that it's feeding and it is feeding into a 2 to 1, a 1.2 1, 1 to 1 load. So it's happy. The power is going up the coax and we're still radiating. How much are we losing this time? <gasps> You'll never guess. It's nearly, nearly 2 dB. Nearly 2 dB. We might just be able to hear the difference. We might just be able to hear the difference. So we've got to 4 to 1 VSWR and we're still getting replies. We put out a CQ and somebody comes back. We call a station. We've got a 4 to 1 VSWR and he comes back. Hooray! The field is still nice and green. Well, it's still fairly green. So you see, the losses are not as much as you might imagine. Now, I have been using a mobile setup recently, and I wanted to move about the band. And you'll see on the screen now my mobile setup. It's basically a TX500, which is the new Russian transceiver, which by the way, will be with us in the next uh, few weeks, hopefully by the end of this month. It generates 10 watts, it's very slim line, it's SSB CW. Um, nice thing about it is you press a little button, it, it generates a tuning tone of about two or three watts. I have been using the LDG tuner to uh, tune it um, because it, with, with, an, with a, um, an HF mobile whip, it's very narrow, the, the, the bandwidth is very narrow because it's a short antenna. Short antenna has got narrow bandwidth, that's the penalty. Um, but if you use an, an antenna matcher, and of course a lot of the mobile transceivers available now, they're quite small and they don't have built-in antenna matches. But if you've got a matcher, separate matcher, you can then move around and you can still play around in the area of three to one or four to one, and it still works. And I was, I've been moving about from CW to SSB on 20 meters, and all I've been doing is just pressing the button on the antenna matching unit, the antenna tuner with the LDG tuner. 
and that tunes it fine and the antenna radiates fine. Okay, I may be losing about one and a half dB, but at least I can move around the band. And if it's raining, I don't really want to get out of the car and have to adjust the antenna and then check the VSWR, etc, etc. So I set my mobile antenna at around about 14.1 megahertz. That gives me the ability to move around the CW section. And if I want to, I can then go up into the SSB section. And all I have to do is just tap the tuning button on the LDG tuner. And Bob's your uncle. I've got a good match and I'm radiating a signal. Now, yes, I might be losing about one and a half dB, but it's not that, not that much. And of course, with a mobile system, you've got very, very little loss on the kayaks because the kayaks run on a mobile system is only around about four meters, maybe a bit less than that. And that's just a fraction of a decibel loss on the HF bands. So you're losing about one and a half dB on the three to four to one area, but you've got a little bit of gain over the base station because you've got a shorter length of current. So it actually is quite an efficient system. I would encourage you to explore your system a bit. Don't be frightened of going into the three to one area if that's all you can achieve because the antenna is resonant at a lower frequency or a higher frequency. The efficiency goes down a little bit, but not nearly as much as you might have led to believe. So, it's interesting, isn't it? You can move around the bands and you can have a reasonably high VSWR, high in terms of what you thought you could have, and still radiate a signal. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't you should always strive to get the VSWR on the antenna system as low as possible because it gives you a good starting point. But don't be frightened of moving into those areas or think that, no, I can't operate up there because the VSWR is too high. And even if I put the antenna matcher in circuit, I know I've still got the VSWR. Well, yes, you have, but it might just work. So thank you for watching this video. Um, it's really aimed at the newcomers because I'm sure, sure some of the old timers will know uh, a lot of this anyway. But you take care, enjoy your ham radio. Don't forget down at Portsmouth we've got a wide range of products. We've got the largest ham radio warehouse in the UK and we're always happy to do deals. Just pick up the phone and have a chat with somebody, uh, with Glenn or Stephen or somebody down there and um, I'm sure they'll do a deal and uh, we'll be happy to not only sell you the gear, but to support you if you need support afterwards. And that is an important thing. In the meantime, take care, enjoy your ham radio, speak soon.